Now next, I would like to give you a quick review of the Cisco campus switching hardware portfolio. But before I take you to Cisco's website, a couple of things I want to bring to your attention. There are three main types of switches. You got the fixed configuration switches. You got the modular configuration switches, and then you got the stackable configuration switches. And I'm going to go through each type on Cisco's website. A couple of things to consider before you make a purchasing decision. You need to think about how many ports you need. You also need to think about, are you buying switches for your access layer or distribution layer or core layer? Or are you buying switches for the entire network? If it's, your, if it's a brand new location and a brand new site, maybe you need switches for all three layers. Or maybe you're a brand new business and all you need to do is just have two layers instead of three tier architecture. You could do that too. But these are the things you have to consider. You have to think about the port density. How many ports? Do you need a 24 port switch? or a 48 port switch, what do you need? Switch throughput. What kind of throughput? Do you want a line rate throughput? Line rate throughput would mean that if you have a 24 port switch and each port happens to be one gig, that's one gig times 24, that's 24 gig. So that means that you need a switch that has the ability to operate at a full 24 gig. There is no contention ratio, meaning there is no bottleneck. Each port is able to access at a line rate. Typically, that's not the case. You don't, in campus environment, you don't need switches because those end up becoming really expensive switches. When you want to get wire speed switches, they end up becoming very expensive. Typically, in a data center environment is where you would want switches that have no contention ratio. In campus environments, you're going to have... 8 to 1 type ratio is very common, 4 to 1, 16 to 1 type of ratio, you're going to see stuff like that. The next thing you need to consider is PoE or power over Ethernet. And this is important because it just depends how many voice over IP phones you have in your environment. So if you're going to have a lot of voice phones or SIP phones, you're going to need PoE, power over Ethernet. Meaning, you don't, you know, those switches get their power from the Ethernet cable. You don't have to plug them in separately into using an external power supply. Instead, the Ethernet port that's plugged into this, the phone powers it up versus non PoE. So, we also call that data port. So, data port versus voice port. You need to define how many ports you need. Plus, you need to decide whether you need a copper switch or fiber switch. Once again, in a campus environment, copper switch is very common you may need a couple of fiber switches to connect the different floors together, for example. You also need to consider power. Do you need redundant power? Do you need a switch that has multiple power supplies in it? And finally, scalability. Does your switch allow you to grow as your environment grows? Or are you stuck with that switch? Meaning if you get a fixed configuration switch, as I alluded to earlier, and if it's only 24 ports and you got 24 users on that floor, you're done. The minute you hire a 25th person, now you need a new switch to be installed on that floor. So something to think about. And that's what I mean by scalability. Now, without further ado, let me take you to Cisco's website so we can do a deep dive. So what we'll do is we'll go to cisco.com. So we go to products, networking, switches. Once we come to this page, what we want to do next is we want to scroll down and you want to get to a point where it says view all Cisco switches. Click on that link and you will be absolutely blown away when you look at this, especially if you're brand new to networking and you haven't really worked with switches before. And let me explain what I mean. So look at how many different categories of switches you got. Blade switches, campus LAN, data center, industrial, ethernet, InfiniBand, LAN network management, blah, blah, blah. I, w I don't want you to get overwhelmed. The only type of switches you want to pay attention to are these switches right here, campus LAN access. You want to look at campus LAN core and distribution. And that's it. These are the only two types of switches I want you to be concerned with. Later on in the course, you can also look at data center switches, but right now I don't want you to get overwhelmed. Let's focus in on campus LAN switches 
and the core and distribution switches. That said, now let's go ahead and click on the access switches. Now here are the different categories of access switches. What I want you to pay attention to is Cisco released their Catalyst 9K or the 9000 series a couple of years ago. And this is the series that Cisco has been pushing the most lately. So if you're in the market looking to purchase switches, this is the series you need to be focused on. You need to be looking at Catalyst 9200, 9300, and 9400 switches for your campus access. And these 9400 switches could also be potentially used as your distribution slash core collapsed as well. And I'll, I'll tell you more about it in a moment. And if we were to look at the campus LAN core switches right here, you'll see we got the Catalyst 9600. It's a fairly new series. It was launched a couple of months ago. Catalyst 9500, don't worry about the 6800. Cisco is eventually going to sunset the 6800 platform. 6500s have been around forever, so, so forget about that. And some of these other switches are kind of going away as well. You, you primarily need to focus on the Cisco Catalyst 9K line or the 9000 series. That's what you need to be focused on. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.